guys, so it has been a hot minute since I've posted anything. Um, some things have happened. Um, for one, I was in and out of the hospital the other night, so I mean, that's another story for another day. Um, I would go into it here, but I don't feel like being lectured for how my shitty lifestyle choices probably caused it. So anyway, not going into that right now. But um, more importantly, Peter Tork, huh? Um, I have interesting, conflicting feelings on this one, and I feel like this might be the first celebrity passing that not only has affected me, but there's been enough of a personal connection to where I have conflicted emotions. I'm sure when the two remaining members of the Who go, it's going to be the same deal, since, you know, I used to work for Pete. So, um... And Roger was kind of a douchebag to me, to my face, multiple times, so there's that. But this is not about them. This is about Peter Tork from the Monkees. So, much like when Davey passed, I unfortunately found out through freaking Facebook again. I I'm starting to hate the platform because of that. Um, this really hasn't been a thing with other celebrities. I it's just them that I seem to learn a bit through. Um... But a friend of mine had posted an article where I could only see the first few words in the little snippet blurb and notifications was like, Peter Tork, lovable guitarist of dot dot dot. And that's as much as I could see. And I just, my stomach dropped the second I saw that much. I was just like, oh no, it's happening again, isn't it? And I hesitated. I was like, I need to know, but at the same time, the second I click on that, if I'm right, everything changes. Um, but, of course, I couldn't hold off from clicking on it, so I did. And I was right, the rest of that headline was Peter Tork, uh, guitarist of the Monkees, dead at 77. So, that, I was surprised that I was as affected by it as I was. Because I got as far as reading that headline and just instantly started shaking and couldn't stop. And that, I really didn't expect that to happen. Um, but it's just a weird thing because with bands where I have a personal link to them, there's, it's kind of almost like two separate entities. There's like the one that I know. And then there's the image and what this band means to me and blah, 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 blah. And they're like two separate things that don't intersect for whatever reason. Um, and that is very true of this one. Um, I admittedly did not have the greatest of interactions with Peter in real life. Just throwing that out there. I'm not here to throw shade. I'm not even here to tell those stories today. I've told them other days. I'm not going into them again. But because of that, like, my knee-jerk reflex was like, I really shouldn't be upset at this, but... And then thinking about what that band has meant to me, as long as I've been a fan, since I was a teenager, and just all of that. They're two separate things, so the first few hours I spent just trying to dissect my bad interactions from the rest of it and just focus on this over here and just try to disregard that because at this point, you know what, if he's gone, none of that matters anymore. Can't happen again. So that doesn't matter. Just throw it away. It does not matter. Focus on what this band has meant. He was still one fourth of the band that defined my teen years. So there is that. And frankly, if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't have even discovered the band. So I mean... It may be a complicated thing, but I do have some things to thank him for, so there is that. Uh, because the very first episode I ever saw was One Man Shy, or Peter and the Debutantes, the one with two titles. Um, and obviously it revolves all around him, given his name's in the title and all. Um, it was the first one I had ever seen. I think I was all of 14 or 15. I want to say 15. Sad thing is, I could have been a fan so much sooner if I weren't a stubborn little shit. Just, I was convinced for whatever reason that the monkeys were just a Beatles ripoff and therefore I would have nothing to do with them. Uh, until I realized that 
So online, all my Beatle friends are also Who fans. And all the people who are fans of both these two bands also seem to be fans of the monkeys. There's got to be something to this. There has to be a reason they all love them. And clicking through channels, I just stumbled on that one day. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna watch it. And I just instantly fell in love with it. <laughs> and more importantly, I just thought his character was so sweet and lovable and just endearing. Um, to where it's just like, oh my god, I get it. And they're really nothing like the Beatles, honestly, but um, I wish I had known that a lot sooner. I could have been a fan as early as 97 if I'd just known that, but hindsight's twenty twenty. But regardless, just because of that one episode, holy shit, I had no idea the Pandora's box I was opening that day by watching that one thing just by chance that I happened to give a shot to. Um, did not know that it would end up becoming my favorite band for many years now. The Beatles re rightfully retook their position as number one. But there was a good number of years in there where they actually had eclipsed them. And nobody else has done that. Ever. They're the only ones that have ever managed to make it above the Beatles for any period of time in my life. So that, that just goes to show a lot of just how big a deal they were to me. And frankly, they still are. They're not number one. They're down to number two now, but still. Still. So, for the longest time, that was all I had seen. That was my only access to them. It just had been by chance that some weird local access channel happened to show an episode, but it wasn't like a regular thing. But that summer, this had happened back in probably like March or April of that year. Sometime over the summer, late June, I actually... Managed to go back to the TV land, TV schedules for 2002 to find this out, to figure out the exact date of the first ones I watched on that channel. Uh, so I know for a fact it was late June, um, <laughs> which is really pathetic and I really don't care. But late June they were showing uh, Monkeys episodes at like one in the freaking morning. But um, just happened to stumble onto them again by chance one night because back in those days I could still pull all-nighters and think nothing of it but um these days I crash at like 8 or 9 p.m. because I'm old but <laughs> um, anyway just happened upon it again I think the episode that time that I started out with was monkey versus machine which hmm who does that episode revolve heavily around again Peter, also Nez. So, I mean, I guess I, I see where the early groundwork was laid for my fandom, but, um, but once again, I was just, like, instantly sucked into this, and it's like a magnet. I couldn't fight it, um, and just thought they were, like, the greatest thing I'd ever seen, and this time on this channel, it was a regular thing, and they would show... I believe two episodes of them back to back at like one in the morning or one thirty, some shit like that. On um, I think Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Um, unfortunately, it didn't last really long. It pretty much only lasted over the summer. But um, after that initial first episode, I went and found some blank tapes because yeah, we're talking about the days of VHS still, guys. And I went and I started taping every episode as they aired so I'd at least have them to watch back whenever the hell I felt like. I actually still have those tapes and they're the ones with like the syndication songs in them rather than the originals and actually I still like them better with the ones from syndication better than the original songs that were in them. Not gonna lie, just throwing that out there. Uh, but anyway, I think it made it up to about halfway through the first season before they stopped showing them of all the things to replace it with, freaking square pegs, like, ew. But, um, so I was rightfully devastated when they pulled that, but at least I had all the ones that I had taped to fall back on and rewatch to death, and then I started trying to hunt them out. Um, the DVD sets hadn't come out yet. There was the Our Favorite Episodes DVD that has, like, four episodes on it, and there was one that I had found that um, also had four on it, but didn't really have like a proper title or anything, just randomly had four episodes, because how back in the day they had all the VHS set tapes, uh, this was right on the cusp of they were starting to re-release those as DVDs, 
but it was like the equivalent of two of those VHS tapes were put on one DVD, but I only ever found like the first one of those DVDs. Uh, but it gave me something to play with anyway. There were more episodes beyond the ones that had aired that I had taped myself. Until the following year when finally the DVD sets came out and I was able to freaking finally get the entire series. Oh my god. <laughs> As if it weren't all over before. Oh, that just was like the final nail in the coffin of there is no turning back at this point. But those earliest days... Peter was the favorite. And eventually that morphed. Um, for one episode, it morphed into Mickey, randomly. Only lasted one episode. And then Davy took over. <laughs> there was a freaking no looking back after Davy took over. But um, for the longest time, I had still held a special place in my heart for Peter. Until... Years later, I ended up having these negative interactions one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with them. So, but again, I'm trying to dissociate just that, which was like one small piece of shrapnel, versus the entire thing of this fandom. So it's like, okay, I can, I can let go of that, I guess. Um, so, <laughs> um, just taking into account the fact that suddenly just the sucker punch that oh shit he's like gone like gone gone there's only two of them left now and no matter which way you slice it just two of them cannot towards the monkeys that means this band is officially over and that is almost harder for me to swallow and then the actual loss itself. Um, I mean, I knew that Mickey and Mike were touring just on their own anyway. They did last summer, too. But, I mean, at least there was the option that Peter might at some point come back. Um, I think the last time the three of them performed together was 2016, September 2016, I believe. Um... And everybody figured that was, you know, the bookend to Nez touring with them, except that I guess behind the scenes Peter got sick again, and that's why he stopped touring, and Nez started taking his place. Just, it was kept from the public, understandably so. He wanted his privacy and more power to him. Uh, but that does mean that it hit kind of like a brick wall, when the inevitable did happen, because we didn't exactly have much warning. I mean, I suspected it. I'm not gonna lie, I heavily suspected it when they suddenly said that he would not be touring with them and gave no reason, but there was whispers about health issues. So I was like, oh crap, his cancer came back, didn't it? Uh, because in like 2009, he I don't remember the name of it, but it's like cancer of like the salivary glands or something. He had like part of his tongue removed. I believe it was like a whole big thing that's like a really really rare type to even get in the first place and even rarer to survive so the fact that he did for like 10 years after the fact that, that's pretty good ultimately I mean would have been better if it didn't end up taking him out later but what can you do um but just that first day I mean after the initial shaking stopped I just felt numb and it was almost like my brain was going, nope, nope, no, I'm not doing this. I'm in denial mode now, <laughs> like when George Harrison died, like, I think that one took me a good seven years for my brain to finally just accept that one, that there is not three of them remaining on this planet anymore, there's only two. Um, yeah, that one's a little ridiculous, even by my standards, that it took that long, but what can you do? Um, our emotions are funny things, but, um... This one did not take anything like that, obviously. It hasn't even been one year. It's been a few days. But, um, no, just that first day, I was just numb to the point where it's like, I don't even want to cry or anything, which is a change, because I know, uh, usually celebrity deaths that actually affect me, I cry like a little bitch. When Davy Jones died, I cried for a freaking month and a half every single day, so I don't want to hear it. But, anyway, um... I take these things very personally and very hard, and I'm 
that's my prerogative, but, um, you grieve how you want to, I'll grieve how I want to, but anyway, this one didn't even want to do that, it just, it was this weird feeling of this doesn't feel like real life, like, no, they have to be wrong, but no, I mean, logically, I guess it makes sense, but no, 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 it's gotta be another hoax, right, just another celebrity death hoax, and then Nez posted. That was what I knew. Oh, shit. This is real. There is no denying this one. This is actually real. And then he posted again, and his second post, the long one, that one made me cry. Because at this point, Nez is my favorite, so. But, um, I know, I'm all over the place. I really don't care. But, <laughs> um, oh, God. Yeah, that one, floodgates open for a while after I read that. But then I went back to being numb. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Um, until about that night. And then it was just like, very slowly starting to sink into just feeling generally just down. Not even depressed, just down. But then the next day rolled around and oh, now it hit. All of a sudden now it's like, now it feels real. I didn't dream this shit. This, this happened and it's real. Oh god. Now I have to emotionally deal with it. Great. <laughs> um, I am far from the only one in this boat. I mean, just look through even just the tag on Twitter for the monkeys or for Peter Tork or anything. There, there is a lot of us who are in this boat right now, so it's not just me. Uh, we actually have a very active fandom for this band, believe it or not, even though they're a 50-year-old band. It doesn't fucking matter. But, um, it just feels unreal still. The yeah, the depression has started to hit, but, um, there's a channel that shows the monkeys every Saturday morning now. I think it's, um, Family Entertainment Television, I believe, FETV, which I didn't even know till recently we had, but they show them every Saturday. It wasn't till between episodes when they had the In Memoriam for Peter that it just was like somebody punched me in the stomach and I just lost it. It was just like ugly crying and holy shit. And one of the episodes had Auntie Griselda in it and oh my god. I felt so stupid. I'm like, this is the most ridiculous song on earth ever to be crying over but what the fuck so I mean, was there ever another Peter episode that made it, or a Peter song that made it onto an episode? I mean, Shades of Grey half counts because he only sings like half the song but I mean, one that's, like, entirely his, I think that's the only one, really. So, there's that. But, um, yeah, I felt so stupid. I was like, this is a goofy song. I shouldn't be crying at this. And yet, the more I told myself to stop crying over it, the more I was just like, ah, I gotta be crying. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, and it just hit, and it hit hard. And that's when it just sunk in all the way that yeah that this is a thing this happened and then yesterday there was another channel um i think that one was me tv that had two episodes on they had um ironically the one that brought me to the show in the first place one man shy and they had the devil and peter torque which uh, not gonna lie, that feels a little in bad taste right now, showing an episode about a man who just died in real life, selling his soul, soul to the devil and going to hell. I mean, just far be it for me to judge, but it feels kind of too soon, <laughs> you know? Um, although, not gonna lie, I mean, it did kind of cross my mind, wondering if any of the channels showing them we're going to include that one, but, um, but at the same time it does feel a bit too soon and like, oh, that's, that's kind of questionable taste right there, but, um, yeah, that's, so I don't know, emotionally I'm kind of all over the place because it just, I do have these two conflicting sides where one half of me is like, yeah, you really should not be this affected over this one of all people, but then the other half's like, yeah, shut the fuck up, and, um, this is what this dude has meant to me, as a 
one piece of like this whole huge thing that has meant so much in my life that it's like, yeah, I, I feel like I probably should just feel what I need to feel on this one, conflicted or not. Um, it's just very strange. I mean, I didn't expect there even to be that much fanfare when he went of all people, um, because usually he tends to be kind of forgotten. You mentioned him, two people don't know who the hell you're talking about. Um, but I thought wrong. <laughs> There's actually been quite a bit. So, it just, it's, it's a strange thing. And even now, I mean, if you ask me how I feel over all of it, I don't think I could answer that even today of what, what are my feelings? How do I feel about this? I, I don't know how I feel. And that's what makes this one so weird and so hard, trying to sort this out in my head, because it is conflicted. There are two things going on, warring against each other with it, emotionally, but... I mean, the one side is winning, though, and I think it should be. But it does make it a really weird thing where it's just like, I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. Uh... I am sad that he's gone. I am sad that that kind of does officially mark the end of that band, even though some would argue that, yeah, they're not even a thing. It's just a name. It's just a trademark. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's nice. But um, to the rest of us who actually follow them, yeah, it very much is a thing. Maybe not in legal terms it's not, but it is. It is. Um, it's just very strange, and it sucks. Because all of the people I'm a fan of are all getting up there in age, and now it's getting to where it's like, it's inevitable that they're dropping like flies now. And it hurts more and more as each of them got- you'd think I'd be getting desensitized to it, but no, it's getting worse. Because it's starting to circle in on the ones that are really going to bother me more than anything. If I thought I took Davy Jones bad. That was like my warning shot of how I'll probably cope when Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr go just- I should not be left alone, probably, when those two happen, just saying. Um, obviously, I'm gonna be real bad when Lars Manelli goes, even though I've kind of half expected that one for so many years that I probably shouldn't even feel anything when that one happens, but at the same time, I know I'm gonna be a fucking wreck. Um, there's several others where it's just like, that, those are gonna hurt so bad. A lot of them have already gone at this point, and it's just like, fuck. That's the downside of having older fandoms is that, yeah, you, you may have more of a career to draw from and enjoy and consume, but them being up there in years means that they themselves are gonna go a lot sooner than if you liked young people. Probably anyway, I mean, that's barring accidents, suicides, things like that where they go young, but I mean, um, yeah, it does get to be inevitable and they're all starting to hit ages where it's like, Oh, no, 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 I don't want this to be a thing, but I mean, circle of life and all that, you can't avoid it. But, fuck. <laughs> Just like, no, why, no. And then another realization hit me. February is a really fucking bad month for this band. Peter went almost a week to the day of when Davy died. That took me a while to realize it, but when it is, just like, oh, hell no. This is just like the George Harrison, John Lennon thing again, where it's like a little over a week apart for the two anniversaries, and it just makes that little portion of the year really suck as a fan. And now it's like, well, apparently late February is just gonna suck as a Monkees fan now, too. It just, it, it's crappy. I mean, I know... The dates have to land somewhere, um, but what are the odds that they would fall that close to one another? I mean, it just felt unreal. His birthday was just like a week before, and now he's dead. Like, what? What? But then again, David Bowie, look, that was only like, what, two days apart? So that doesn't mean anything, but <sighs> it just, it's a lot to digest and let sink in. And it's hard. I'd be lying if I claim that it's not hard. Um, and of course, 
fandom is doing what fandom always does when somebody from one of these bands dies. Suddenly, oh, everybody's a Peter fan now as of that day, even though a lot of them could have cared less the day before. I'm sorry, that feels really predatory and vulturish to me, and I've seen it happen time and time again. I saw it happen with George Harrison. Prior to that, in the online spaces, like, most fans were either John or Paul fans. There was a tiny little fraction of George fans, and if you're a Ringo girl like me, you're just shit out of luck, because you'll probably never encounter another one. But if you're lucky, you might find, like, one. But, um... The second George died, suddenly, oh, the entire fandom are all George fans now, and what the fuck just happened? You couldn't have cared if he lived or died yesterday, but now that he's actually gone, oh no, now he's your favorite. Just as of right now. Okay. I saw it happen with John Entwistle. Same exact deal. And now I'm seeing it happen again. I'm like... This shouldn't bother me as much as it does, but just as somebody who has followed these fandoms for literally decades at this point, and seen where the fandom levels lie and everything, and for suddenly them, just as of that moment, it totally it shift. I mean, it's one thing to pay tribute and to pay respects to, but to just suddenly, just as of that day, oh, well, he's my favorite now. It's like, that's shitty. Y you couldn't give them that time of day when they were around, but now that they're gone, now you're going to? I'm sorry. I, I find that offensive and just really vulturish, but that's just me. So, I don't know really what else I even have to say about this, but I'm sure that those of you who know that I'm a fan of this band were probably wondering, A, where the hell am I, and B, how am I doing with this? That's pretty much where I'm at right now. I, I still don't entirely know. I don't entirely know how I'm doing, but I'll be okay. <laughs> it's nothing like with Davey where it's like, no, my world's over now. No, it's nothing like that, but um, but it is still sad, and it is something to emotionally process and get through and accept, but I don't know. I might post a couple of covers. I might not, um, depends how it goes. Um, that's about it, really. So, anyways, I don't even feel like it's appropriate to do my normal sign-off, so I think I'm just gonna hit stop on this and post it as is. Okay, okay.